What's up? It's Vanessa Satin, editor of Double XL, here with Shaheem Rahman and JFK. Hey. If you'd like a Clarity Podcast, here we Boom. are. Um, and what's going on this week in the news? I guess let's start with Happy Birthday, Jay Z. Oh, the big five zero. Big five zero. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's <clears throat> the the great thing that that I'm seeing right now is it's funny because Jay Z is fifty and Tretch, his birthday was this week too. He just turned forty nine. So mm-hmm. it's, it's ill to see how. And like, Diddy turned fifty. What a month yeah, ago. Yeah. 50, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Game turned. Game turned forty. Game turned forty. I think Cube also turned fifty this year, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Yeah, I mean, is it time for the fifty-year-old rapper? Or is that not really what's going on? No, I mean, I think we're gonna see it. I, I know Jay ain't done yet. I no, I don't we, think he's done yet at all. I but. know we gonna. I know we gonna hear more from him. Well, in honor of his birthday, he released his entire catalog on Spotify, which seems like a pretty big deal, right? Because you could only go to title up until this point for it. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. now all you Spotify users, including myself. Can listen to all Jay Z if you don't have the old CD. Cancel title. No, I'm just kidding. Cancel title. <laughs> just, just kidding. I thought it was admirable for him to do something like that. You know, he has his own service, and you know, I, I remember yesterday I was looking on social and seeing like everybody saluting him, and you know, me and Shy have these conversations a lot. It's like one of the the number one people, well, artists, shall I say. That we've seen perform the most has probably got to be Jay Z, and you know, so there's there's just like countless memories, and you know, I was like, I want to say something about Jay too. Like we we have a lot of like really personal stories like with Hove that you know definitely wanted to share, but it was just so many that it was like overwhelming, and it just you know put me at a point to be like. Yo, this dude has done so much for the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like he even gave you a, a birthday gift on his birthday. Yeah, right. Selfless. Selfless. S- selfless. <laughs> Absolutely. He really is the goat, though. And I guess it, you know, it, it shows the new generation that 50 years old is still very young. Like he, he's keeping it cool. Like if, if you look back, like I, I was watching over the holiday, I was watching um, Lethal Weapon Part One. Which is a, a Christmas movie, by the way, but we could, <laughs> we could have that debate uh, later later time. Le- Lethal Weapon, Die Hard, Christmas movies, by the way. <clears throat> but you look at Danny Glover, and you know we always look at him as being the older guy. And Danny Glover was literally only forty years old when he did the first Lethal Weapon movie back in eighty seven, and he looked like the old dad and whatnot. We love it, but you know he looked like the old dad, and just to see how. It, Jay Z and Puff and you know keeping it cool in the fifties. Dr. Dre is in his fifties, Ice T is in his fifties, and these guys look look real cool. They they staying young. They they still look, you know. In some cases, Dre is probably in way better shape now than he was during his his heyday run. You know, right. back in the nineties. So, is I think it's cool that we're seeing like the the cool exec and you know, we're just showing that the culture can continue to grow and there is no expiration date on greatness and coolness. Mm-hmm. Like, you could keep keep it going still. It's, it's, it's the thing that what we always talked about where it was like, you know, there was like this, uh, this supposed expiration date on, like, hip-hop. Like, you, you couldn't be right. cool after, like, 30 rapping. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like... Guys like Kiss and Jeezy and all of them, you know what I'm saying? Like, they all rapped about it. Like, oh, I don't want to be 30 and broke. or You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so these guys have given us hope. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jay-Z and, you know, Puff and, um, you know, they've, they've really given hope that this is the only genre where we, they, we really get criticized like that. Like, you don't like see that. Limit, right. right. You, you don't see... They was talking about Luther Vandross when he was like doing his thing and you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. in R and B and even rock music, you know, like they go on forever. You know, this is like the only thing. So these guys have made it cool and you know, they've I think that, you know, hats off to them, you know, to be able to to tap into to continue to tap into like this new generation and keep themselves relevant. 
but at the same time, like, really um, support, like, this new generation to, like, usher in, like, this movement, you know what I'm saying? Like, and really keep the culture going in a different direction because it's never happened, like, back in the days, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I would have loved to see, like, and I'm not, you know, not to not to knock them or anything like that. I'd love to see, like, Run right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, being, like a, like, a big face of the culture and, like, you know, Kane and, like, a lot of these other guys or whatever, like, on the level of how, like, Puff and, you know, well, they're doing, doing a, doing um, they're doing a, and I, was, I didn't really know much about it, but they're doing a official hip-hop museum, which we've heard about for years. That's but dope. now it's really happening. It was, like, a 60,000-square-foot space in the Bronx. But mm -hmm. everything I saw about it was all geared towards 80s hip hop. So I'm curious to see how they involve 90s hip hop or anything else that wasn't like the heyday of the Bronx in the right. early days, you know? Because it always seems like there's kind of a break there. Like, kind of feels like the 80s and then the 90s and everything after that a little bit separate. And I don't know, <clears throat> it would be interesting to see what's in that museum, you know? Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. you know, because we've got the Trap Museum or TI works on that or whatever. So this is official hip hop museum. Are they. How are they finding the memorabilia of anything relevant in the nineties, anything relevant in the two thousands? I'm just curious how they're pulling all that together. But they, it seems like it's actually happening. They gotta come to us before they put that up though. But you that's what, what I saying? think is interesting is that I feel like everybody I've spoken to hasn't heard about that. So who's the driving force <clears throat> yeah, behind gotta, all of it? You gotta really come to the very clear. To the pillars of the community before you put that up, but you know. I always think about it like, you know, when you, like, if you, like, if Big was here and he, like, read the news and seen, like, Jay-Z was involved in the NFL, like, what would his reaction be? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. that shit is mad real. Mm -hmm. When you, you know, when you think about, you think about shit like that. Just because, you know, those are the guys, like, he's supposed to be in the mix. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and even Pac. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you, you think about, all like, all this social justice stuff that was going on, like, a lot of that really stems from him, like, what Cole talks about and um, Kendrick talks about. A lot of that really stemmed, and, you know... I kind of always felt like pop. Tupac, we, we would have lost Tupac to Hollywood. I think it's hard for a rapper to, to split both Hollywood and music and stay relevant in both of them. So I always felt kind of like, at some point, like, Will Smith was a rapper, but he's a Hollywood actor now more than he is that, right? So I always felt right. like Tupac would go in that direction. Not Biggie, but that he'd kind of like end up in Hollywood's clutches before staying with hip hop, you know? I'm I think not really he, sure. I think, but... he, I think Pac would have balanced it. I think if 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 he stopped music for anything, it would have been for activism. Like, I don't think he would have stopped it for for making movies because he, you know, as we see, he just has so much music already. Like, a lot of right. the music that we still hearing trinkle out, like, he only did that in like a two, three year span, you know, like I think he has so much music in the chamber and he would have went on to continue to create, like even just think about how much music Pac would have made if he would have just had two more years of life, you know what I'm right. saying? Like he, he figured out the formula, he figured out the method of how to just churn these records out and you know, even if he would have just had like two, three more years how much he, he music he would have had. I, I think um, he was great. He was a great actor, the, the few glimpses that we seen with him. But I think, if anything, Pac would have just been seeing, like, all the injustices going on, and he right. probably would have ran for office, and he would have won, too. Like, you know, shout out to Scarface. I see Face doing it. I know, but everybody had been ignoring Scarface, and now finally the past couple of days he's been getting donations and acknowledgments from rappers. Like, you would think, with all of hip-hop and the power that it has, that we could help Scarface get into office, right? But there's, like, four people who care. It's, like, Bun B, Charlemagne, and Exhibit. It's, like, the only right. people I but saw talking know, about it. Is... But this is, like, the whole thing. Yeah. It's, like, imagine if we got, if Scarface got, in, Scarface got into office. I think that would be incredible. But, you know, Face is not the person. To get people to care. We got to do it. We, we definitely got to get more on our dean too but and you know face is not the kind of guy that's gonna call up like you know puff will call up whatever yo i'm doing this right let's get it going but you know face is kind of guy that he's gonna do it on his own and whoever helps you he'll, he'll be grateful for but i can't see face just making a round the calls doing the 
the typical politician. No, but I'd love it if you had Megan or Travis or somebody from Houston that was on the younger side that had a lot of influence right now be like, yo, it's Scarface. My dad grew up listening to him. My big brother listened to him. Or I remember so-and-so song or whatever. And then, like, you need one social post from them or something, you know? Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That seems like hip-hop supporting hip-hop. Or a rally, like a, a nice little rally concert or something yeah, like right, that. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely does seem like the message is not out there. Like, it's not clear that he's running for some type of office. Because I think it's exactly this time it of office. It's not like he's running for mayor of Houston. He's not running for president. I think because it's a more entry-level position, like a dis- district or something, local, yeah. it's more local that it, I don't know if it's people are caring so much. I'm he's starting. Really sure. He's literally starting from the bottom. So Drake should put a post on He should. <laughs> I know Drake loves him. You know who I would really like to see? I, I mean, I definitely hope Face wins and... I'm fully supportive of it, but I would really like to see Trey the Truth go for some type. Oh, of Oh, he's office. great! Yeah, yeah. Trey's yeah. great. He's yeah, a, he's a living superhero. Yes, like. and mm-hmm. a genuinely nice human being from top to bottom. Anywhere yeah. you go, anywhere you see him, he's gonna hold you down, make sure you're okay while he's trying to take people out of whatever storm is going on and save people in lifeboats for something. I mean, that's a good dude. Yeah, but him and Bun B too. Him, you know. Yes. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of really really good guys. I mean, you know, hip hop breads like really honorable dudes, but Houston has a lot of like really really stand up guys. Yeah. Like Bun it's B, true, and yeah. Trey, and mm-hmm. Scarface. And, yeah. I mean, I I will, we was talking off camera. Slim Thug. Up. Slim Thug. Yes. We was talking about legend, man. I think Trey the Truth has become a legend. Through all of his, you know, not yeah, just for music. To him. We Make sure he hears this podcast. Now. But I saw him the other day. He, 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 you get, a, you got a feeling from him that you don't get from a lot of other people, yeah. just of how he carries himself, watches everything that's and going the, and on. And, he's, and, he's and the fact people. that he's been able to keep going with all the challenges that he's been through. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. this, this is a rapper who can't get on the radio in his hometown. That's right. a very like right. Who been through how many right. things with Trey Day and all right. of that stuff? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's huge. Mm-hmm. And to stay relevant, like it's, it's a it's a big deal. It's a it's a really big deal. Like you know, and he and he continuously gives back to the community. You know, in all different times of needs. Like when you know when there's a hurricane, like you see him on a fucking raft. On a raft, pulling like, people on pulling their dogs people out of their their house Yeah, and shit. like it's yeah. crazy. And like it's, it's his job, like yeah. he's supposed to be doing. It. Me and Shaw yeah. went there one time, and we got in his car, and he fucking shows us how he brought snow to Houston. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. That was like one of the realest things I ever seen in my life. Because like, the kids never saw snow. Because they've never seen snow before. He brought snow to Houston. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> crazy. This this to- this podcast is dedicated to Trey the Truth. <laughs> <laughs> this episode. Um, all right, moving on because we could say all these great things about Trey and they're all true. But let's talk about some more news this week. So top of the week or early on, you had Kanye and Dre posted posing for a picture. Kanye mm-hmm. said because he made an album for God, that's why Dre's going to be working with him on the next album and brought them all together and they took a picture together and I don't know what are your thoughts producer and producer do they need each other it's, no I'm I mean not. the one thing people came away from with the Kanye album if you didn't like the rhymes you like the production right so do you right. need Dre for the next thing or is that really just a photo op and it's cool no I think they putting in work I think they definitely going to do some work together I think it's always interesting who's going to who I'll say that I'll say this for as much criticism we give Kanye, I think Kanye is a better producer than Dr. Dre. Ooh. Man, now he really <laughs> opened the floodgates. He really opened the floodgates. I'm just saying, I, 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 and I, I, I believe there's a lot of people who will agree with that. Dre's a great producer, though. That's a great debate. But I think Kanye yeah. is definitely a better producer than Dre. That's tough. I mean, Dre got so many... Chronic, Chronic 2001, Doggy Style, the work he did on 50, the work he did on Eminem. Three quarters yeah. of Kanye's production catalog went to Jay-Z. And we talking about Jay-Z's the greatest rapper. Nah, I mean, he, I mean, he's so it's like, go, go there. 
Let's go there. Kanye, if you really want to think about it. Listen, man, Kanye is undeniable. And, and, and that's, that's removing his shit. He's undeniable, and he's definitely... I've been kind of championing Kanye to do more beats. Like, I've been saying it publicly, like, his his production... You know, before he did the, the run last year where he did Nas and Tiana Taylor and himself and Cuddy and all of that, he was kind of falling back from the production. Um, he's definitely influential... Uh, it's nothing bad I could say about him, but damn, when you you look about when you talk about who's better, him or Dr. Dre, who's a better producer slash artist? I mean, <laughs> come, come, Kanye. I mean, <laughs> okay, you know, Kanye rapper. Okay. You know, yeah, Kanye okay. could definitely, definitely rap better, better than Dre. Right. But when you just look about all production, like Dre, the, the thing about Dre production is that, and he doesn't have shout the, out to Battle Cat. Battle Cap, Mel Man, Scott Starch, all of those guys who um, work with Dre. But, you know, Kanye, I think he has more, you know, he's he's free, put out music more frequently than Dre, obviously. But every time Dre, like, really drop an album, like, the whole game just changes, like, from N.W.A., then Chronic, and what he did with Snoop. Then he just... Shifted everything with Eminem. Then he shifted everything with Fifty. It's like every time that he re- it takes a long time for Dre to put out something. Also, just although we don't have him doing a million beats with Kendrick, but you know, just overseeing what Kendrick is doing, overseeing what Anderson Park is doing, um, and the game. We can't. We just mm-hmm. was talking about the, you know the stuff, the game album. That, but the can't new, you make like, the same argument with Kanye overseeing um, Big Sean, sure. overseeing right. Pusha, overseeing yeah. Designer, and, 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 and not only that. I mean, like, you can't, like his, it's, his it's own, a great debate. His own catalog. I think I think Kanye's his own catalog. Ca- is, I think Kanye's is, catalog is, as an artist immaculate. slash producer. Right. It's immaculate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's what it's saying. immaculate. That's what, and that's part of where I'm coming from. Like you know, with that, you know, that very. Ooh, uh, I'm asking Twitter, and they're saying Dre's a better producer than Kanye. Oh, come on. Based it's, off, of, based off of what though? It's not that know, big of a. It's, it's not. I, I, I say this. It's not. It's not that big of a gap though. It's like it's not like Dre is lapping Kanye. Kanye. You you can't take none. Well, away I, from I think the I think it is. I think it is a bigger gap. But it's not like it's not Dre's fault because Kanye has way more producer artists. Like Kanye has way a more massive catalog than Dre right. does. You know what I'm saying? And that and again, it, it goes back to what you were saying about Dre. Like he takes his time. Like, I feel like we have music. to do the numbers. Like what year did so and so get in the game? How many years have they each been in a game? How many projects they worked on? How mm-hmm. many number one? Like there is some sort of math formula to figure out on paper who might be stronger, right? Dre did Doggy Style. He did Snoop. Um, I mean, Chronic. NWA. NWA, NWA chronic. You know, Chronic. Get rich the Eminem and shit in 50. You know, the, the Eminem shit, I'm like, whatever. Like, I feel like Eminem kind of sold himself, too. You know what I mean? Nah, like, but, yeah, but you but didn't Dre, nah, that chance. Nah, nah, he, 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 yeah. Hell, but people Otherwise, was the guys in the, the Rap Eminem Olympics shit. rapping, you know, in circles right. on uh, the freestyle yeah. over and over. Dre, Dre made the Eminem albums movies like when you listen to that that first Eminem album when he put it out on his own and when he got with Dre it's, it's two different things man like Dre knows how to like really be the Martin Scorsese of pr- production and just the, the, the overall sound like even today just listening to Dr. Dre produce or Dr. Dre mixed records mm-hmm. it's like it, it don't sound like anything else. Like you go to, and we need to get uh, chronic the first chronic on title. I don't know what's going on with that. Somebody's birthday right. that'll happen. Yeah, let's 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 see if we could get that done. The the, the sequel is on title, but not the the first okay, one. Okay, so Dre Kanye or Kanye? Kanye West and Just Blaze did the blueprint. Yeah, I mean you they you they did the blueprint. He you did Watch the Throne. You can't take nothing from did the Dynasty. You can't, this like, is... It's hard to dispute that, and I mean, and that's not even you ain't even you ain't even bringing up his albums. This is I mean this is Jordan, late registration. This is, a, this is like a first Jordan, album. This is like a Jordan Kobe type <laughs> situation. Like you can't Man. front on either one. It's 
this might be the Jordan Kobe debate. Like you can't front on either one. I think Dre is Dre to me is the goat. Dre to me is the goat. He hasn't done anything to lose that. Nobody's taking it away from him. Kanye is definitely in my top five as well. But Dre is the goat. Because Twitter is responding and even terminology just said Dr. Dre. Of Everyone's course. going Dr. Dre. Of course, course he's got to say that. <laughs> But it's like, but again, it's like, I'm, I think it's I'm like based off on this of, one. It's like, go ahead. I think I'm, kind of, I, th- I think I'm with, with Kanye on this one. With Kanye. Yeah, like you, it's, it's, it's so. Kanye got the right now at this moment. It's, it's Kanye. All we talk about is Kanye, regardless. Yeah, but that's not because the beats are so great. It's because he's just is crazy with what he does in his antics. <laughs> We're talking about him because of Trump stuff, because of crazy shit he said, of stuff he yeah. did, of his wife of her ass out of what he's saying about what she's wearing of him being religious all of a sudden dre's like i'm living my life i work at apple or i've got an apple thing <laughs> and um he's not in a controversial space at all if dre did any of the antics that kanye did what's the last thing that dre did working with kendrick anderson. working with kendrick and anderson yeah is niggas talking about that shit more than push a t shit in in in, in yeah. Kanye's last I, album, I, I think I mean, and 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 Anderson is he's I don't think super Dre, dope. but I, I would I would argue that I don't think Dre's actively involved like Kanye with him, right? So it's but hard that, to put but them that's what I'm saying. That's they're a, not a, they're that right. like Kanye wasn't actively involved when Dre first got started, right? Right. You know, but so I, I think that's a part of it. Like you you know, it's a it's a sport. You gotta you yeah, gotta be in it. It's body. I mean, you know, we looking at body of work, bodies of work. I still, I, I just think that every time that Dre puts a project out, like it's just so game. When's the last time though? I mean, the last time he put out something was the, was the Compton joint that go along with the movie, right? And that, and that was big. That was it was dope. That was big. But was it as big <laughs> as it was supposed to be? It was dope. That was funny because that I think it didn't that was live 20, up to the hype. That was 2015 that came out, right? I think that was 2015. It was dope. I thought it was dope. I, 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 I felt like people didn't really give it the respect that it was supposed to like I remember hearing the shit live. You know what I'm saying? I think like, people they did like did a whole for, like, live the first event week. or whatever. Like the you first know, week it came out. You first know what it was? was like, I, I, I think I mean it, it went platinum from what I understand, but I think if it didn't get the fanfare it deserved was because one, it was like it was a, it was treated more like a soundtrack than an actual album. So it wasn't like Dre was going on tour, touring the Compton thing. And the movie was just so big. I think people right, was yeah. just so fascinated, me included, with the Straight Outta Compton movie, just to see that first scene with Easy e in the trap house and the cops coming. Like, it's just and I, a, a, a light stunt. I saw the, the movie Straight Outta Compton in Dre's studio. He played it for me. That's a light stunt. Light I stunt. feel like the, the be, I feel stunt. like the, the best yeah. shit that he's done recently was with Game, specifically well, we like the, the Red Album thing. 2016, dope with Ti featuring Marsha Ambrose is that was crazy. Most recent uh, beat and all as per, uh, all the like shit he did on Game's Red Album was crazy. Game's Red Album was out of here. That was some of the. We'll love to we'll love to see him in. Him I think he makes some of the more. best music like with Game, definitely. Is that is that your favorite, Dr. Dre produced combination? Him and him and Game, him and Game, him and Fifty. Yeah. I love mm. him and M. I do love him and M. Yeah. I thought he was he was ballsy to take a chance on M. And then he uh, let right, I give you that. I give you that. Like right, he let right, M be M. Right, he didn't try to recreate right. him into something where he thought would get through. Right. Whatever the stupidity was of the. Marshall Mathers stuff or the, you know, Slim Shady stuff early on, which you knew a lot of people wouldn't relate to, but, you know, M's diehard fans, mm-hmm. he just didn't remove himself from that. He was like, it's okay, you go do you. Guilty mm-hmm. conscience. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I love all those combos. Him and him Game make some crazy right Him and Snoop is always going to be my favorite. I was thinking about him and Snoop Yeah, too. him and Snoop. Yeah, right, it's yeah. always going to be my favorite. But, um, you know, it, like, I, like I said, man, Dre and he's, he, he has these artists that really... Uh, become legends, like not just stars in the game. Like if you look at Dre's Snoop, Eminem, 
50. Well, that what I just said to you before though was wrong yeah. with Wikipedia. Like so, his most recent is 2018 was four tracks on Anderson Pack. So yeah. that would be the most. Recent. I think you know Anderson Pack is he's he's dope. It's just like like for me like the the fascination like with game. I remember when game had first was about to when he was coming out he was like doing an interview with who kid i want to say and they was trying to describe him he was doing an interview in new york on who kid show and who kid was like yeah he's he's a he's a west coast guy who like raps like an east coast guy and he has dr dre and that shit reminded me like when dre was fucking with the firm like I feel like the firm album like should have been a lot bigger than what it was because him messing with you know just to see a, a a a real big West Coast producer like teaming up with like a super lyrical East Coast guy like Nas or like a Jay Z or whatever and so that was just like the like what you always felt like with Game you know which was like really really dope um, Anderson Pack is dope like the the stuff that they did together was like was like really really cool but. I felt Anderson Pack also like sold a lot of it on his own. Well, he was very talented musical on his own. Right. I mean, you didn't even need a drum machine with him playing the drums, right. you know, or whatever. Well, we have a, an interesting tweet from somebody named Dave Stanek who says Kanye's entire MO as a producer is his, in his later career became all about stretching the limits of creativity. Dr. Day's production over time became all about stretching the limits of perfection. That's kind of a good quote, right? Yeah. You know, a good, a good. Well, Kanye, and Kanye, said, Kanye acknowledged that he he said. Recently, um, with his whole thing with teaming up with Dre, was he was like one of the things he admired was he always wanted to be like Dre because Dre was such like this perfectionist, right? Mm -hmm. And and we see that, which is like I guess that's like his well, his thing with like it, he yeah. like why he like pushed his album back like oh I'm trying to perfect this song yeah. and perfect that and blah blah blah. And by mm -hmm. the way, the, the debate is something that I don't think is over at this point. Like by the way, I think that. You know, Quincy Jones did Thriller when he was 50. Dre is just in his early 50s. I, I think it's if he could find an artist that he could get as excited about, I think he'll uh -huh. go. You know, I think he'll go in, he'll lock in, he'll do some more stuff. I don't know what's up with his own music, but I don't think we're done seeing Dre coming out with, you know, more new artists. And obviously Kanye still got a lot more in the tank. Like we could have this conversation two years from now and Kanye could have produced about four or five other classic albums. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's 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 a debate that I think is gonna go on. Um about being the GOAT. You got some other guys that's wanna jump in the conversation too. I know Timberland wanna jump in this conversation. I know Swiss, right. I know Rizza. Um Man, that first wave of Wu Tang. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right, next, we're going to move on to the next topic just because I think we could debate this one all day. Yes. Um, also going on this week, so I guess big story or maybe not, I don't know. WAC 100 says that Nipsey wasn't a legend, right? And <clears throat> got into it with T.I., then mm -hmm. called out T.I. for being a snitch, and T.I. came back and said, Wack was too old for this, and that he was too rich for it. Ti was too rich for it, and <laughs> Wack doubled down a bit. And so, I guess the the general besides the Ti stuff, I guess the general consensus from Wack One Hundred, who is Blueface's manager, and has been around in the industry side of things on the West Coast for a while, doesn't think Nipsey should have gotten all the praise that he did. And also earlier, I think it was last week kind of pointed as Nipsey as being responsible for some of the problem that he had that day by the scene with the guy, which we've talked about before. So one, does it matter what WAC 100 saying? And two, is there any truth to it? And I guess more important for this week is, was Nipsey a legend or not? Um, I think it doesn't matter what he thinks. Um, I'm going to just start with that. So we're done. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next topic. <time. laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. It, it's, just a, it's just kind of a weird thing to say, like, I think if people feel a certain way about someone who's no longer here, it's like you can't really tell them how they should react or how they should feel about the person. It's So it's weird to say that he shouldn't be getting the praise he's getting or whatever. It's like, I don't know. It's It, it just really feels weird to me. I mean, I, I think it's undeniable that Nipsey is, is a legend. Like, his, his legacy is something that's 
you know, inspiring. Like I, I just met people recently who who came across Nipsey's music and said that it really helped them through a hard period in life. Like they was going through some really rough times, and his music <clears throat> helped them, inspired them. I think Nipsey inspired so many people um, in life and. You know, when they find about what he did in in his, in his past, and me and Ramon were, were right there at Staples Center um, at the at the funeral. One of the biggest things that we're, we're ever gonna see. Yeah, you gotta <clears> give, <throat> you gotta give it to us for that alone. It's 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 Just for that. It's artists that's alive right now with number one singles that can't they even yeah, they ain't gonna get fill up shit. the Staples Center. Yeah. Um, Nip was a. It, but that also has something to do with the tragedy, right? I mean, sure, he was hugely popular and famous there, but the tragedy and the way it happened live on social and TV and everything that happened enhances it even more. Right. And we all know hip hop is very much like somebody died, let me post my picture with them, let me make sure I go to the funeral. Like, I always feel with hip hop is maybe it's in other places too, but in hip hop, it was like you're competing about who's dealing with the biggest loss. But Look I at think, the last tweet I got from Nipsey. Look yeah. at the last text I got from Nipsey. Look at the last photo I took. Like it's all about us on Instagram celebrating our relationship with Nipsey. Why? So you can feel like you're competing with people for what you lost. Like that's the weird side. And then every you know, I heard about people going to the funeral and never even knew him, you know, or right. had anything to do with that. So there's something to me interesting in in death what we kind of revere people to be. But I well. think he I, I think he just inspired so many people. Like it was people that, you know, literally never heard his music before. It was some people that never even heard of him. Like it's you know, some uh, you know, I know a few guys that there's a barber shop around away from me and, you know, shout out to the barbers in there. They never even heard of Nipsey, you know, my, my Puerto Rican Latino brothers, man. <laughs> they never even heard of Nipsey, but when they heard about the death and the, the story of what he was trying to accomplish, it just it, it sparked a real response in people. Like, what he was what he was doing, what he was trying to do, and what he already accomplished is a, like a beacon of hope. Like, it's a very inspirational because it's not a lot of people that's doing that, you know? And, mm-hmm. shoot, he was literally on his way. The last time we seen him, was that well, the yeah, Rock Nation brunch? On a pad he for was whatever Grammy was nominated. Yeah, and 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 not for nothing. Like, how much? I mean, think about Big. It's not that much of a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, Big was on his second album. He wasn't here to really see the success. He had his first album, had a lot of success from out of it. You know, and I think that the 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 mess that, the, the thing that I feel is unfair is that people are counting, they're counting out the grind of what these people did before their professional careers actually took off. It's like, it's like as if like your work doesn't count until you actually got signed to a label, like until it became yeah. official. He had because two it was years like, of work. Right, that's what I'm saying, because he had a, a bunch of shit that was going on before he even put an album out, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, that should be constituted into like the effort. and. That was some of the things that what I could see somebody could go against what Wack was saying. Like, what's really going on now too is, you know, this the game right now is at it's at a crossroads where it's like we have certain standards that we would go off of like back in the day. So Wack, oh yeah, those are out of one though. Right. He's so he's not wrong for the shit that what he's saying, but it's a little bit different now. You know what I'm saying? Because of things like social media, etc. And you know, it, it, it's just really hard to, like, to say that somebody's not a legend just because of, like, statistical reasons. I mean, hey, if you want to, like, implement the fact of how, how many social followers he has, how many people, how, how much he sold out fucking the 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 um, marathon clothing, you know what I'm saying? Like, those things factor into it. And those things wasn't factored into it back in the yeah, day. It wasn't. It you know wasn't saying? just. So it's it like, wasn't just music with. It right, wasn't just right. music with. It's with Im, it's it's impact. You know, like we wrestled over this stuff a lot. You know, and you guys know it too. Like when we come together and we talk about lists and like what's a criteria, like what's a really fair criteria when we talk about album sales, radio play, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the biggest things that comes into it that you really can't put your finger on is impact. 
Well, you used to be able to very quantify things. I'm a sound scan king. I miss all this in the first week or I sold this total. And right. that's how we deem people successful, right? That's and the, now that's, that's not that's what the it is That's the benchmark. That was the, right. that was, the, today right. it was more was the benchmark because we're not sitting there looking at sound scan like we used to. And not saying what's your first week. And people aren't selling a million records in one week. And they're counting streams differently and, and all. It's just, it's hard to quantify things even though there's nothing but ways to quantify it. There's hard to quantify what success is in this day and age, uh, compared to what it used to be. So you're right. If you I, have 15 million followers on on Twitter yeah. or on Instagram, does that make you more powerful than somebody else who has more credibility within hip hop? Right. So yeah. that would be a little pump versus a Nipsey argument or something. And right? because motherfuckers would be like Jada kisses, or who met like a lot of people. They're like, yo, they're a legend, and there's things that you know, there's advantages that he might have over some of those people. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but they came out in a different time period. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's it's, it's a it's, it's a it's a really challenging argument. But I'll just say, like, just coming from like just from covering the culture, you know, for the past twenty plus years, covering fucking Jay Z and Biggie and Nas and Puff Daddy and whomever, and looking at Nipsey and and just going off for of impact. If I never turned on the radio, never listened to the radio, I never looked at sound big scan, you and used I go to be off a of, because imp- of the radio, right. and now that's not what it and is. And if anymore. I go by impact, that motherfucker's a legend. I went into that fucking funeral, and it's like you could feel that energy, and not only that, like just to walk around and to see people and talk about it. It's like a lot of times when things happen, when it's over like two, three weeks, like anybody knows, like when somebody passes away, like two, three weeks, like it's kind of over in their mind, except for the family who it really affects. Right. We still talking about Nipsey. This shit happened like four or five months ago. You know what I'm saying? Like we still gonna be talking about this shit next year. So it's like that says something. Like alone, you know. And again, like not to even discount like all the shit the way he did before that album came out. Like it was literally a year ago till next week that we sat down. We spoke to the nigga. He ain't had no album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's full on yelling at you right now. He does that. He's, 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 he's so heated about it. I was, I was, right I was, I was use any opportunity to yell at the man. <laughs> but it, it just, it just, it just fucks me up because right. I'm like, damn, like, you know, you can never really go back in time. But we were sitting there talking to this man, you know, and I know you have your stories with him too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I'm like, damn, we were sitting there talking to him. And I'm like, if that, would, if we would have known that, that would have really been one of the last times to really sit there and build. And there would have been so much other shit we would have been pulling out of. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's just, and, and it's and it's crazy you that people kept in is, touch more. You would have done all things. Yeah, it's it's yeah. crazy that people are sleeping on him like that. You know what I'm saying? Like they did Rolling Loud in his hood. He was nominated for a Grammy. Well, now he's nominated he nom- for more. And he did and a you, lot of you, stuff you gonna, independently too. You gonna be saying that he's not too. a legend? He's you, nominated for a Grammy. He he was, he was independently too, man. Like you know, we was we was one of the first people. Like I I wrote Nipsey first bio back in like over 10 years ago and he actually never came out with, with that album but <clears throat> we seen Nip go from so many eras we seen Nip go from like the hand to hand mixtape type era you know over 10 years ago to this new streaming thing and he did a lot of it independently he he like he he really built himself up you know he's so made what I think say is that he so believed in himself and what he was doing he didn't feel like he needed other people to totally guide him that same way that he was so confident in a good way in in his goal in his vision and what he was trying to accomplish yeah, you know and, that yeah. that you know sure come along for the ride the nipsey ride and be a part of all of this but he knew where he was aiming for i think that the, you know the the whole essence of like what is a legend like really needs to be reevaluated like you know when we was having a conversation about the king of new york or the king or whatever like you're not gonna really have too many artists and stuff you know, who's going to be giving back to the community. And, you know, I'm sure he was at a period in his life where he didn't really even have it like that, but he was still giving back to his community. Well, like, that's similar a big factor. You could go through like, how many rappers really do give back right. to the community. Like, and, it's, and there's, it's lot, not, there's, there's rappers who's popping who got real money, and, and then, they don't do that They shit. don't do anything. Right. And then there's rappers who are like, yeah, it's a good look to give away some Thanksgiving turkeys, and that's all I do, and it's cool, and it's my right. annual turkey drive or whatever, versus being part of giving back the 364 days of the year that's not Thanksgiving, you know? So I think that's a big factor with him is that it wasn't just about the press look. But to to all fairness to Wack, you know, 
he represents an element of hip hop, which is like the streets and you know the, and cre- gang the cred- culture, yeah, right, and the credibility. And there's people who feel like on that. a coast that we're not right. sitting. So on. there, so yeah. you know, you got Uncle Murder was talking a little bit about that. You know, the last time when um, when he was up here, so. They have their positions, but again, I think it's just worth a conversation for it to be reevaluated. Like, what's a legend, and you know, and we don't know what their relationship was, Nipsey and West. Right. Like, where anything is coming from, based on you know, I mean, not to say that this is it, but where are they trying to work together and do business and didn't work out well, and he wanted to manage him, and there's something there. You know, maybe there isn't, but we really don't know. At the end of the day, is what was the relationship, and for whack, where is it coming from, and why now? But I, I but I'll tell you, and can't nobody tell me shit about it us being in this culture and covering this shit for two decades plus and being behind motherfuckers who's the Kanye's and the Jay-Z's and the Nas's. If we say somebody's a legend, they're a fucking legend. That's in the story. All right, so next week, bring your legend list. (laughs) Shah's not going to be on it. (laughs) (laughs) All right, also going on, on on a shallower side, but also did make noise this week, was Offset being hacked. Cardi defending him, saying he wasn't really hacked. Or no, he was, sorry, I, I take that back. Uh, Cardi saying he was hacked. It's Kashi 6 ix girlfriend getting involved. You guys all have your heads down, but that was a story <laughs> that did happen this week and actually got a lot of movement and traffic off of it. So mm-hmm. any thoughts, JFK? You've been in the office on this one. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't really call it. Uh... That was safe. <laughs> I can't really call it's it. It's a guy code. We ain't going to really <laughs> put the guy out there. I didn't think so, but we had to mention it. If, if Hey, if his wife say he cool, when was it? It, what was a a year, it, was, it was a year ago. It was the same rolling right. loud where we ran up on, yep. on set and he was yep. talking about getting back with his wife. He had to bring out the flowers. On so. stage and all of that, yeah. I think Offset has learned his lesson. <laughs> I think he's learned his lesson, so... I, I, I'll go with the story that he was hacked. Guy code. <laughs> he still ain't answering. No, he's not answering that one. He still ain't go there. He's had opinions in the office earlier this week, though. Looked a little fishy, but, you know. Ooh, no guy not, code there. You know, I can't I can't say, you know. I, I, personally, I think Set is a little bit smarter now to send... DMs. That he's got what a lot. He knows what he's got to risk. Yeah, I do. And yeah. he knows what he's risking. I mean, yeah. relationship, family, professional re- uh, reputation, and all, all right. of that of what people you know, are going to think. She's on. She's on the fall up list, and you know, not saying that it's about money, but I mean, he he got a he got a good woman, and you know, him being a superstar, like it's it's tough for them guys to send out DMs because. A lot of these ladies, they just want clout. Even if it was something where they would have their indiscretion or whatever, you always got to be worried about somebody putting you on blast or trying to extort money from you or uh, different things. I, I think he, I think he's smarter than that at this juncture. But I, I, I do too. But you know, me being a guy who's like definitely on like the tech heavy end of the business. There's just a lot of situations where people be like, I got hacked. You know what I'm saying? Like was l- looking at the situation where R. Kelly's girl was saying that she got hacked. And right. I'm like, at what point, like you, you would think that when you, you know, you this massive celebrity that you would have this, a higher level of protection as, as opposed to like the average person. You mean tech protection, like not being yeah, able to Yeah, I mean to take preco- like this is why you have people on your team uh-huh. who's who's helping you with this stuff, like your publicist, your manager, like that's just, that's but their they might responsibility. Not even, you basically, know, they, they ain't implementing that. Offset is probably. Well, I mean, it blows up so fast before people can get in front of it to even deal with it. I mean, if the thing happens at one thirty <clears> in the morning and by the next morning he's dealing with it, there's no moment for that publicist to even deal with it till it's already out of control. I was trying to help. <laughs> I just meant I don't know what you put into place. You know, I don't know what you can really put into place I'm just saying, with it. Like, okay, guy code, who, I got who's it. Who's hacking you at one thirty in the morning though? But is he <laughs> really going? Is, is he I'm really just saying, gonna, like, for real? <laughs> there goes the guy code. Then. Is he really gonna risk it all for some pussy? Takashi's baby mother or ex girlfriend? Is he really gonna do that? 
I mean, you, I, I don't know. You don't know. You, have you seen I don't know who wants to offer this would, would you I don't, I don't, I don't think know. he's going to risk it all for that. Cardi B is definitely the, 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 the biggest prize, and it would be crazy to fuck that situation up. So. Especially after all you went through, like, you right. just went through... Not even a year ago. And no, the whole stage thing. We'd never yeah. seen anything like that. You like you were that. saying, yeah. She made a hit out of... <laughs> right. Right. Out of the, out of the yeah, situation. Yeah, but didn't some of Jay and Beyonce's good music, you know, great music come, Beyonce's album come after yeah. that whole thing? I mean, sometimes great stuff comes from those uh, things. Not to say that we're going to get this. Mary much, J. Blige. Know. I mean, Cardi got yeah. an album coming out. Who knows, yeah. you know, what she's been through and what she puts in there since then. I think some of that marital... Turmoil is not is. I think is I think some of it is is uh, entertainment. I think some of that marital turmoil is entertainment. Yeah, it definitely could yeah. be just like fake relationships and it's a, fake dating and all of that. Listen, it's it's and the I, fake relationship of Megan right. and Moneybag, yo, right? <laughs> right, and I and I you know I I like to equate a lot of stuff to sports. I like to equate stuff to wrestling. It's like. You know, you you got a you got a team that's been rocking for so long, and it, the situation you want to get in front of it before it gets stale. You want to give the audience something else to talk about. So, I think some of the stuff is just entertainment exaggerated, but hey. or just fun for you, entertainment value. You know, even yeah. if it is something that's real, it's like oh, okay, let's right. You know. All right, moving on, because, you know, the moving energy's on. weird in the room. Before <laughs> <laughs> you guys move on, just in case there's an edit, you might intro on this one just one more time before you jump in. All right, so we've got the Cardi and Offset situation where allegedly Offset DM'd Takashi's uh, girlfriend who he had a pre-existing relationship with and Cardi had some beef with, and he was saying, I miss you for real. For real. I miss you, FR. <laughs> and then... He claimed that he was hacked, and then there were some tweets that went up after, hours later, that were a little bit questionable. And it was so were the story is that Offset's Twitter and Instagram were hacked to put up these things, and Offset and Cardi insist that that's not true, and made a video together to say that's not true. And then JFK said he believed all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fifty said if he said it, if he did it, they say he did it he, he did it. Did that. They said that nigga did it, nigga did it. He did that shit. <laughs> he did that shit. <laughs> All right, so it's not too much. Trippy Red had a number one album that was pretty big. XXX Tentacion's track listing leaked for his final project. What's it? Skin twenty two, forty four, two. I don't know something. And um, and that was it. Otherwise, it was kind of a quiet week. What else you guys want to talk I, that, about? I, that, that's dope for Trippy. I he slipped one in, right? Yeah, oh. that was. I don't know if I didn't see you know, that coming. I didn't. I didn't see yeah. number one coming from him. Especially, it's a mixtape, right? It's not even an album, even though mm-hmm. I don't know what it's the a project. Is, right. I saw yeah. some. Project. <laughs> I saw some interesting news where one of the guys who was sentenced, who was down with um, the Treyway guy, six nine, yeah. yeah, was saying that the beef with Trippy and six nine was staged. I love what we were just talking about. I would say I don't believe that based on some of the same information we went through with them. Um, Freshman was an interesting experience. And the tension of that day, even though Takashi wasn't there, but we shot it in his hood, um, you know, and and Trippy being there, I I don't think that whatever, what the feeling of what we had going on that day and around gearing up to a freshman was fake. If it was, none, it wasn't. I, I, from, from our firsthand experience of dealing with all of that, I would doubt very highly that they the tension that we had to deal with during the freshman time. Yeah, I didn't believe I didn't believe it either just from just from seeing it. I mean cuz we we dealt with a lot of that stuff and being in the middle of it a bit and um and they having the same management and blah 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 and everything and I that's that's got to be some top-notch acting in order for them right. to pretend based on, you know, the kind of hoops everyone was jumping through during freshman time with with their issues, you know. I think it's cool for him to um go number 1. I'm not the I can't say I'm the biggest trippy red uh, savant, or you know, like I'm not a huge kind of saw his music. Uh, being a part of, uh, you know, covering Rolling Loud and doing a lot of interviews backstage, I definitely interviewed him a few times at Rolling Loud and getting a chance to see 
his performances and how he's he's really one of the Rolling Loud staples. Um, I like the fact that these guys can go number one without having to have a huge hit on the radio. Like, but it is they, a slower week. He didn't have a lot of competition yeah. for releases. It's hey. either was going to be Post Malone coming in again, right? Or an album that was already out. You didn't have a, another big release that day for him to really be threatened by. Hey, you got you got to take the number one when you can. You definitely you got, do. But you if could, there was a big release, you think it would have yeah. done as well? Or do you, you know? I mean, if we had more competition, I'm not uh, sure if he would. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I mean, you got people, on um, you know, putting out major albums that's not doing, you know, numbers like that. That's just. The numbers look abysmal in, in, in some cases. It's... But I do think, I mean, I felt it with Kanye. I do think people sit there and try to pick the week where they're not, where they're going to have the least amount of competition to manipulate Yo, the just, number yeah, one. Yeah, that's you strategic. Know? Yeah. yeah, that's strategic. They, they, shoot, they do the same thing with Hollywood movies, you know, like, you know, Terminator, no damn well, he ain't competing with uh, Frozen Part 2, you know, like, we, we got to space these out a little bit. <laughs> I ain't coming out against Avengers Endgame. Hell no. So, you know, you got to space it out a little bit, be strategic with it. But, I mean, for the fact that, you know, at this young age, he could say that he's got a number one album that still holds a, holds a lot of weight. That's definitely an accomplishment, yeah. So something else that I thought that was pretty interesting, too, that I saw was... Um... Apple is putting out a documentary about one of the alleged accusers against Russell Simmons. Wow, I didn't oh, see wow. that. That's being hosted by Oprah. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a punch in the gut right there yeah. for Russell, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, and then... I mean, know, there's a lot of women that accused Russell. Like, it's it, well, we, the headline, we don't want to really go into it, but there's a good chunk of women in that list. Uh, it just all was many I'm years ago, right? Well, and even bigger than him, like, the headline that I saw was... The music industry is shook over this Oprah documentary, and I'm like, "Wow, that's a that's a pretty big statement." You know? I haven't heard one person talk about it. So yeah, it, well, I, I, I yeah. it just I think it just like kind of dropped like last night. Yeah, it's but all being know, I, written around, just being written about now. You know, five hours ago, eight hours ago, it's brand new. Yeah, but I, you know, it's like we always celebrated Oprah in in hip hop. I'm like, is that is that foul? Oprah was um, never a big hip hop fan. Remember when she had like Ludacris on for the first time or something? We were like, right. oh my gosh, she has a rapper on. And then she had Jay on, but they had to, in exchange, she had to like go and give computers to everybody or something. Like, I, we love Oprah, but I don't think she's ever been the biggest hip hop fan. I remember when she did like Go Shorty, at it's your birthday. And yeah. she was, and everyone was like, oh my God, she did the 50 Cent song on the show, you know? But I don't. I think we always kind of wondered how much she really cared about. It. I think we even thought Gail was a bigger hip hop fan. Yeah, like I Gail is definitely a bigger hip hop fan. I don't. I don't fuck with Kid Rock. But when he, the situation with him. Oh, recently, yeah. And when he was talking about like what the the hate was really about, like if that was true, that that is actually kind of interesting. Where he said that they they wanted him to write like five things with that he loves about Oprah in her show in order for him to appear on her show. And so he declined wow. to do it, and that was part of what his hate was for her and why he ended up going on this rant. Now, that probably was like five years ago. I'm like, damn, you still carrying, you know, that fucking burden this long. But I don't know. I, I was I was a little disappointed to, to hear about hear about that, you know, because like... Well, about Russell, what? About the Kid about Rock the, or the About the shit with Russell. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't know the story, but... It's about the lady you Drew you, Dixon. You can't take away from what Russell has done for the culture. You know what I'm saying? And I would hope that they have Russell, or they at least reach out to him to be a part of that piece. But These are allegations yeah, that he's Dixon. denied. Drew, yeah, Drew Dixon yeah, is Drew Dixon. Uh, a woman that worked under Russell yeah, Def at Def Jam. Jam in the 90s, and she quit um, allegedly shortly after he, he raped her, which is, you know, it's it's, it's terrible, you know, he has he has definitely um said he's innocent of these charges. He's hasn't been formally charged by the police or anything like that. He's he's stuck to his innocence. So, you know, innocent to proven guilty in my book. My thing is I don't know anything about what happened between him and him and the lady Drew Dixon. Oprah kind of rubbed me the wrong way after the Michael Jackson thing. Me too. I did you know Me too. Mm -hmm. And then it came out that those guys were lying and 
you know, and then she kind of backed away from it, but. It just that, that whole Michael Jackson thing just rubbed me the wrong. But isn't way. this influenced by the R. Kelly documentary, right? And that's that's what I'm, right. that's what that's kind of where I'm going. Right. Which I'm hearing about. Because it releases at Sundance in 2020, right? Because it's a pretty big thing. Because I, I, I feel yeah. like they looked at it like that was that's now a model. Well, uh, right. totally, yeah. So people is like, oh, we're gonna use this, and it's like, but damn, he deserved, like, but is he this where we gonna it. go? <laughs> I mean, when you hear the like the behind the scenes stories of the documentary of the Rus- oh, sorry of the R. Kelly and things that didn't make it on there, or all the different people, all the different things that had to do with it that we didn't get to see in that multiple part thing. I mean, that sounded like a hell of a situation. I hear that part two is coming. Yeah, there is. That, that's a whole lot. That Gale interview with yeah. him was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. <laughs> I just feel like this is going to be like the big like. This is just going to be like the beginning of like some epidemic of shit that we're going to end up seeing, you know, like where all these people getting put under the spotlight again. I'm not I'm I'm not law enforcement. I'm not, you know, I'm not investigating. if If they did it, they did it. But I just think this is the wrong way to go about it. Is to do the documentary about it rather than the case. Because people's because people's benefit like fucking lifetime who has nothing to do with hip hop culture. Fucking benefited from right. it. Now you have Apple, who's benefiting, who's going to be benefiting from this shit. What the fuck was they at when, when you know, Russell was putting out, like, all the Def Jam shit? It's just... So Devil's it's Advocate, kinda, kinda if kinda Russell crazy. did rape a bunch of women, a few women, a couple women, but there is... They are unable to do a police investigation. It was too long ago and all of that. Should he be taken down and people should be exposed to what he did, even though it's over the statute of limitations of when he could be charged... Or should, because the crimes happened so long ago and he can't be charged anymore, should they just be ignored? I think it should be it, sh- it should be the reverse. Like, they should try them in court, and if they're convicted... But what if too many years story? go by for court? What if they got away and it, too many years have gone by to try him? Then, yeah, that's different. Then does he get away with it? Or is the way you get him now, um, hypothetically, through a documentary because legally they can't? It's tough. I, mean, I, I guess that's just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know That's really what happened, really but but I think the thing with the Russell cases is that they were so long ago. But and how then come... with the R. Kelly, is he still had the girls living with him? Right. Yeah, I mean R. R. Kelly, he 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 just was he's wild. He he was just too wild, man. It it, it looked like he would even, you know, after the stuff that happened to him originally, like. You a would normal would person would have just... Right. You just went... Right. I'm on <laughs> one girl. One <laughs> no, there's something wrong with him. Yeah. That. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, he, he has a problem. It, it looks like he... It definitely looks like he has a problem. What the Russell Simmons thing is, you know, I guess for people, you know, we, we grew up off the Russell Simmons legacy. And, you know, a lot of us know him personally. And he's never been... I mean, you know... I don't. I don't know him to be a violent person. I know him to be a very calm and collected person. So, you know, is is difficult to to grasp. But my thing is, I I just gotta. I, I guess I gotta get better with the law because all of the stuff that people allege for Bill Cosby happened years ago too, and Bill Cosby was able to get to go on trial. So because it happened years ago, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right, like no, that's the no, no, thing no. I think I'm, is the I'm just saying, right? Yeah, I'm just saying, like, is is it's a little bit of a disconnect because mm-hmm. Bill Cosby stuff, a lot of his stuff happened even before, you know, Russell Simmons was even an adult. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it happened so long ago, and he still, the the police was still able to get evidence and take him to trial. And obviously, he he's in jail now, so it's like. If it's if it if it wasn't so long for Cosby, why is it so long for for Russell? Unless they don't have the proper evidence. Well, Apple's statement is produced and co-directed by Dick and Deering. The documentary follows a brilliant former music executive who grapples with whether to go public with her story of assault and abuse by a notable figure in the music industry. The film is profound examination of race, gender, class, and intersectionality and the toll assaults take on the victims at, and society at large. And it ties into three different alleged rape cases. That just sounds uh, like I mean, a it's bad gonna get... look for him. <laughs> 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 it 
this doesn't sound like anything. I would say good. regardless with with Harpo <laughs> working on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the icing on the cake. In December 2017, interview with the New York Times, three women, Dixon, Tina Baker, and Tony Sally, detailed separate incidents in which Simmons allegedly raped them. Dixon's account was reported, and then it's got her report or whatever. So I think we thought nothing was going on with the Russell case, right? Like, it, it he kind of went away. We haven't heard from him very much. Tweets here and there, but it's not Russell, the godfather of hip-hop, as that role that we all thought of him. And a, time, a lot of time has gone by generationally. But I think we're like, yeah, wherever Russell is, well, we don't really know what happened. It was so long ago, and then this is in the works. And you're like, all right, well, the uh, can of worms about to open up a bit. Yeah, I just I just saw a picture with, um, shout out to Andre Harrell. Saw a picture Andre had posted on, on the gram, him and Russell, and was just talking about, like, the relationship for all these years. And I was like, damn, that's dope. You know, Russell's, you know, trying to get back into it. And you seen this shit, I was like, damn. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, diff- it's like I said, it's difficult to grasp because, you know, Russell has always been somebody who we've all re- revered, and you know, um, somebody who I've interviewed a million times, and uh, just one of the smartest people, in smartest the people, funny, and you know, his his legacy is. A, a big chunk of what hip hop w- w- was built on, so it's, it's just difficult to grasp him doing anything sinister. And all right, just know. to say here, just because I forgot what the number was, but it was reported that 18 women have accused Russell of sexual misconduct or rape. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. And I guess three women are stories are part of this, with one woman is. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, but that's what. That yeah, is. I mean, we we got it, we got to see how it plays be, it'll out. It'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, we got to see how it plays out. That's tough. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else on that now? <laughs> uh, you know, just we we coming off the holiday Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a great holiday. I guess I should have said that at the beginning <laughs> of the show. I hope everybody had a great holiday. But it was some really dope albums that come out, man. Like it, it really gave me some. Uh, some inspiration. I love the Griselda joint that just dropped. Uh, Fab, you know that's my guy, one of my favorites. He got a nice the summertime shootout part three, and then that game born to rap. You know, I, I had a chance to sit down with Game in in the studio, um, over the summer while he was uh while he was working on it, and I listened to quite a few records off there, and I know it was gonna be something special, but. Then when you get the track listing and you see twenty five songs, it's like, damn, you know, it's it's a, it's a different time now. Like twenty twenty five right. songs is is a lot to wrap your head around. Like I'm, which like twenty five songs at a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it's it's different. Like when we saw uh, Life After Death and you saw that many records, it's like, oh, I'm excited, you know, but. When I saw that 25 records, I was like, what is Game doing, man? He had a dope <laughs> album. All he had to do was condense it. And, but I sat down and I listened to it, and it was nothing that I wanted to skip. Like, he just he just kept coming coming with it, man. Like, I think, you know, when it's all... Well, he said this is his last album. Who who believes rappers? Right. Who should they say they're gonna it, retire? You know, my, my my brother Fat Joe said this might be his last album. He got a album dropping uh, today. When y'all see this, and he's a special guest next week. Special guest next week, Joey hey. Crack. Bam! Bam. Family ties. We about to go, we about to go see Joe right now. Just remind him so he knows what time he got. Yeah, be yeah. <laughs> it. But uh, you know, I I think uh. My my point is that if this is Game's last album, I think he went out on a high note. I think it's one of the top albums of the year. It doesn't have that one breakaway hit, like, oh, this is going to be on the radio 24-7, or this is going to have, you know, 150 million streams. But solid, 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 solid body of work all the way through. Um, he... he Talks about the relationship with him and his brother. He has a he has a section on there dedicated to Nipsey that we was we was listening to a little bit of it before the uh, the podcast started. And 
you know, me and Ramon was just saying, like, that 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 made me shed a tear when I heard it. When you hear Nipsey's voice coming on and he's talking about, yeah, when I first met Game, he was driving through the hood by himself. He had the strap on his on his uh on his lap and then you had Nipsey actually rapping in the song and Nip says something like, Yo, I I probably will die in the streets. Nip says that on 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 the record. But my name will live forever. But my like name that. will live forever. Yeah. It's like wow, this is penetrating my soul right here, man. So I definitely got to give a salute to Game on 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 that new album, and you know he's. I and think the album cover. <laughs> the album cover. Genius. Is so different. Yeah, and the album. That was that was pretty genius. Was so different. Yeah, that was pretty genius. Yeah, I, I, I think Game has solidified himself in that top twenty. I know we talk about like the, the debates and all of that, but I think he's definitely solidified himself in that top twenty. He's been one of the most. Again. He's been one of the most consistent, <clears throat> by far. And you know, and he yeah. he made a comment about being like the best in the West Coast. And you know, obviously, the first thing you think about is you think about Kendrick, but he has a he in my opinion, at least, is a fan of the music. Like, he has a, a valid point of at least entertaining that conversation. You know? I mean, lyrically, like, he, he's he been has, a like, monster. what, like, six, seven albums? It's hard to be consistent on, like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, you're not talking about, like, two or three. Like, again, like, we saying we salute Big, he only had two albums. Technically one. You know, and, and Game is, he's he's been consistent on every single album. He's a Dr. Dre protege. You know, and... Dr. Dre protege and 50 Cent protege, you know, and the fact that he's able to remove himself from them and still, like, keep it popping, like, that's just not easy. It's not easy in in, in music, you know, to stay relevant. And he's he's done a a damn good job, you know, in my opinion, of doing that. I I think think he's very underrated. Well, that's why I was going to say, like, why do you think, like, people, uh, it's, it's not more fanfare around game, like, you know, this album, is when you listen to it, it's, it's so immaculate. And, you know, I, I just w- want well, to see Well, don't forget, he just had a big lawsuit. And he's got a fact he that he has $7 million right. to it's pay the, him for sexual assault, I believe. It's and it's off, very hard to retire right. when you're going to owe somebody $7 million the, or have to pay somebody. It's the off-music shit that I think that kind of, like, rubs people the wrong way. Like, he has, yeah. like, a, like, a really aggressive character, like personality you know what i'm saying and, I, and you know it's, it's like with those type of people like you really got to understand them you gotta really know them to understand the shit it's like if you don't know it and you sit back and you see them tweet something or say something that shit could turn you off you know what i'm saying i think that that's what it is but it's like if you was to just stick to just the music there's a lot of there's a lot of shit that can't even like hold any weight up to it i really wonder like as great as <clears throat> and part of my voice i gotta you know this weather change as great as he he's been, I really wonder how big of an artist he could have been if they were able to keep that Dr. Dre, Fifty Cent, and Game that mm-hmm. triumphant. They never could because it together. was never built to be that way. You know, just how it was set up. Game was a G Unit artist who was also an aftermath artist. All the other G Unit artists were not aftermath artists. What Buck and Banks had to do to get a Dre beat, you know, versus what Game had to do. So it, they didn't start from the very beginning with it being built out. It would never had a chance. Right. And I guess them egos at the time, too. Right. You know, them guys. Was, and was they didn't live near each other, right? Right. You know, I mean, you had the 50 Banks Yayo being a core group from how on, how long, Buck not being that far away, Game on the West Coast in a different time zone, and it different cultural mind state of just what the West Coast was like. I mean, it was like a puzzle piece that didn't really fit in the puzzle. Yeah. Sean yeah. Money need to get back with game. That would be real. That would be interesting. Now Sean's going to say, shout out Sean, for <laughs> Sean Money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else, guys? We're running long today. Happy birthday to Chinks. Chinks' birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to oh, Chinks. Wow. R.I.P. Oh, yeah, yeah R.I.P. To, the, to the great shout out to Queens, Far Rock. The great chinks and French Montana. Hope you feeling better soon. I saw his track listening. He got a double album coming. So French, you know how to make songs. He he's come a long way, man. I 
I re- I always me and French we laugh about this uh sometimes. He used to come up to M T V and he bring bring his uh his Coke his Coke Wave DVDs up there, which which was great. I, 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 I hope he could find some way to, to re put those put those out again. Like it has some footage that people never see. But we we always laugh because I, I remember be being like, Yo French, there's this new dope rapper from Brooklyn. His name is Pat Poose. Can you put me in contact with him? And French was like, Yeah, but then French was he was kinda looking at me like, uh, I I rap too, you know, I rap too, but he he's come such a long way and big, big hits and big, big streams. So mm-hmm. he, he works hard, man. He deserves all of that. So heal up French man. I know you gotta terrorize yes, them women, man. You gotta get back and get all them girls crazy how you be doing. Guess with that we're at.